It's the Hattricks and the Wolves squaring off here in Danbury. And we are happy to bring you the action here from Danbury Arena. I'm Josh Starr with Jim Cerny. It's the Hattricks and the Wolves tonight. Watertown leading the league at 22, 3 and 0. 64 points and an 8. 53 points percentage. The Hattricks enter at 16, 9, and 2, 46 points, and a 568 points percentage at third in the league. These two teams faced off on Wednesday night, and Watertown got the best of the Hattricks, but Danbury has given this Wolves team two of its three losses this season. They have, and, and both were in this arena, uh, but Watertown's had the best of Danbury as of late. You mentioned the 6 3 game on Wednesday. Uh, also last Thursday, there was a 5-3 victory, a back and forth type game that ended up going to Watertown, a 5-3 win, uh, aided by an empty net goal late in that one. Uh, so Watertown's had kind of had the edge here. They've won 13 in a row, Josh. So not only are they the best team right now in the league, they are the hottest team in the league. And Danbury, after their nine game winning streak, they've been struggling and they have now lost seven out of their last nine games coming into play tonight. The Hattricks have had some issues in their own zone of late, yeah. and that's really what Dave McIsaac is trying to sure up on his, uh, on his team. And tonight it'll be Frankie McClendon in goal. He will be making start number 11 on the season, and his last, well, he, he played on Wednesday night in Watertown and gave up six. On Saturday, he was pulled early from the game. What can we see from McClendon tonight? Well, it, it's not just about Frankie McClendon. Really, it's about the entire team commitment to defense, keeping the puck out of their own net. Uh, certainly, Frankie McClendon wants to start, you know, building back his game. Uh, he's, he's struggled his last couple starts, and, uh, you know, but struggled because of the team in front of him as well. It's kind of a, you know, a chicken and egg thing. A lot of guys missing from the lineup tonight. We'll talk about that when we return. We'll be right back with the National Anthem playing now. Just about ready for puck drop here in Danbury. Josh Starr with Jim Cerny. The starting lineups tonight presented by PR Electric for Watertown. It's Luke Cohen in goal coming in, making start number four as a 3 0 record, a 333 goals against, and an 891 save percentage. Two of those wins against the hat tricks. Yannick Tifu and Maxime Goyon, along with Cole McKechnie, are the starting line for. Watertown and then Justin Coachman and Nolan Sliketka at the point for the hat tricks. It is Gordy Benell with Johnny Ruiz at center, Steve Mealy on the right wing, and Zach Lazaro and Garrett Gallagher at the point, and Frankie McClendon in goal. Ready for puck drop here as the hat tricks win the draw, and it's right back into the Danbury zone. Goyon in Taking the puck around the far side. Stopped by McKechnie at the half wall. Bunnell able to win that puck free. Goes cross ice to Steve Mealy at the red line. Will flutter deep into the far corner of the Watertown zone. 20 seconds in. Hattrick's first time in the offensive zone. Kept in at the point by Stefanson. It's kicked down low behind the net. Steve Mealy carries around in the corner. Back to the point. Down to look one timer looking for Ruiz in front. And Cohen gloved it with the left hand. 33 seconds into play. And the Hattricks with the, the first chance of the game. 
Well, Josh, we, we talked about how uh, Danbury going with the depleted roster tonight. We touched on it in the open. They will be without Dustin Gesso, who has 27 points in 15 games this season. He earned a two-game suspension as part of a brawl that took place in the third period against Watertown the other night. And they are also missing their top two defensemen, Aaron Atwell and Steve Brown, both out of the lineup, as well as Tobias Ojic, all three injured. Hattricks in their own zone. Zach Lazaro, one of the reinforcements on the back end for the Hattricks, gets the puck to Gallagher, who also is coming in as part of the lineup changes tonight. Nick Levesque carries into the zone, dropping for Tom Mealy. It's down low, the wrister stopped by Cohen, way out of his net. Tom Mealy has the rebound, goes back down low. Lane King intercepts and will carry to center. 110 into play here in a scoreless first period. Garrett Gallagher intercepts at center. Hattricks over skate the puck. Corey Anderson will shove it in to the Watertown zone. 120 into play. Hattricks back in their own zone. Brett Jackson, his first shift of the night. Circles around his own cage. Lofts it to the far side, not out of the zone. It's Prejean carrying in and dropping it into the corner. Along the near side, Zika Stanzo pinned up against the boards by Gallagher. The puck hops behind the net, banks off the back of the net. Jackson turns it toward Gallagher, and Jackson has it right back. Plays forward to Kuznetsov, who will outlet to White Duck. At the red line, he'll fire in off the corner and deep into the Watertown end. Kuznetsov forces the turnover in the corner. Can't control, but does have the puck back. Just swings one into the slot. It was intercepted by Prejean and carried out. Day chasing on the four check. Daniluk, his first home game back from after returning from injury, is able to play across to Stefanson, who plays White Duck, and he'll tip in. 2.15 into play here in Danbury. No score between the Wolves and the Hattricks. Deep into the water, or the, rather the Danbury zone. McDonald behind the net drops it, and it's Tifu who controls. Tifu along, back to the point, and it's played all the way through. Back out in front, one timer looking for McKechnie. The pass came from Sliketka, it hopped over his stick, and the Hattricks carry out. Into the Watertown zone, Tifu will carry back and start the rush in his own zone. Coach Mendita deep behind the Watertown net. Sliketka backhands up the boards. Guyon will lose control at center and Coachman will play it back out. Tom Mealy at his own blue line across to Bryce French. French hard off the Far boards, Levesque can't control at center, and it's turned right back into the Danbury zone. McDonald behind his own net. Just over three minutes in. No score, Corey Anderson ahead to Levesque. Touch pass behind his body to Tom Mealy along the near boards into the Watertown zone. He loses control there. It's pushed out to center. Gallagher steps in, but it is Justin McDonald who will control for Watertown. The league's leading scorer ahead to Ahmed Mafus. Mafus into the hat trick zone. Swing to the right circle all the way around. His backhand try in front was blocked away by Gallagher. Tom Mealy will sky it to center. Bouncing puck at the red line. Levesque can't find it. It is taken by Jameyev at his own blue line. Four minutes into play here in Danbury. No score. Watertown in through the neutral zone. It's turned over to Dmitry Kuznetsov. Banks it to himself off the near boards and skates through center. One on four, Kuznetsov at the left circle, backhand out in front. LaBelle struggles with it, the rebound to Jackson. Saved by Cohen into the far boards. Kuznetsov circling to the top of the zone, flings one just wide, and LaBelle will take over behind his own net. Outlets to Jameev, and Watertown escapes their own zone. Across the Hattricks line, it's Lane King down low, bottom of the circle, and his centering feed blocked away as the net comes off at 429 of the first period, no score, and a couple chances on both ends. Hattrick seeming to get the better of play so far. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like the way that they've come out here. Uh, you know, it's a puck possession game against Watertown, and you can't be making mistakes with it. So, you know, Danbury's going to have to be tight in their own end, and but they're a creative offensive team, Danbury. They, they can go offense-offense with Watertown, and they had two very, very good chances that were kicked out by Cohen. Two good pad saves in the opening minutes here. The Hattricks win the neutral zone draw and carry through center. Danbury looking for a good start. First periods haven't been great for the Hattricks this season. 
their lowest scoring period as a team as Stefanson shot blocked out and now it's a three on two for Watertown right to left Chamelka across the hat tricks line serving it toward the front of the net but Stefanson sealed it off and blocked it into the corner. Uh, just over five minutes into the first here. Chamelka still has the puck, gets it to Prejean at the point. Down low, back around behind the net. Day trying to center off a stick. It hops in the air, and Steve Mealy controls. Skating through at the red line, dumps De Costanzo and chips into the zone. 14 and a half to go in the first. It's Sliketka behind his own cage for Watertown. Carrying, and now will outlet. It's intercepted by Johnny McDonald. Hattricks into the zone. Anderson tipping to Tom Mealy. Will slide it down low, but no one was there for Danbury. Sliketka has it right back, getting the legs moving. Knifing through the neutral zone to the Hattricks line. Gets hit off by McDonald. The puck comes to the neutral zone. McKechnie in offside, and now we'll have to wait. Carries in and is sealed off by a Hattricks player. Back in the point for the Hattricks zone, and they'll get out with... Levesque across to French off his skate and into the Watertown end. 13.55 to go in the first period. Watertown from its own zone off of Tifu's skate and deep into the Hattricks end. Chasing is Tifu. The Hattricks get there with Lazaro. McKechnie's pass intercepted and the Hattricks come the other way. Two on two. Jackson across the line with Kuznetsov. Tries to push it toward him in the slot and it was intercepted. LaBelle carrying right to left through center for Watertown. Chips in on McClendon, stops it to the side of the net. In the corner, Gallagher can't clear. The shot out in front hits Lazaro in the back and bounces to the side of the net. Hattricks carrying through out of their own zone with Dmitry Kuznetsov will gain the red line and chip it deep into the Watertown end. King back for it, drops it for LaBelle side of his own net and Watertown will come out to center. Seven minutes. Just about played, Tifu into the Hattrick zone, right circle down low, chips it, stopped by McClendon. The Hattricks get the puck, Lazaro clears it past Steve Mealy, and down low, it will be Lane King who takes back over a big stop from McClendon for the Hattricks. Mealy intercepts at center to Ruiz, right circle, fires, the rebound tried, Bunnell stopped at first, the second chance again all the way through the goal mouth, just trickling wide of the net, and Watertown clears at center. The Wolves take over. Hattricks turn it right back. Ruiz into the zone. Left circle. Wide. Fire. Scores! Johnny Ruiz forces the turnover in the neutral zone and does it himself. Blasting it by Cohen. one nothing. Hattricks. 12 and a half to play in the first. Boy, that was a goal scorer's goal right there. Good heady play by Ruiz. Defense leads to offense, and then he just smoked the slap shot by Cohen for the one nothing lead. But boy, is this a good start for Danbury. Not only getting the first goal of the game, which of course that they needed and wanted, but it came after a great save by McClendon at the other end of the ice, as we see on the replay here. That shot just going up and over Cohen. What a blast. But it's, it's everything that happened in the sequence that I really like, Josh. There was a breakdown defensively. Tifu comes in one on none, and McClendon comes up big. Keeps the game scoreless. Boom, you come back the other way, a little action. Then a good defensive play, defense leading to offense, and Ruiz then finishes. So a lot to like in that sequence, and a really, really good start so far for Danbury tonight. Ruiz's team leading 23rd of the season and the hat tricks with a great start tonight. They seem like they've carried the play so far tonight and you talk about no McClendon. Question. It starts with him in that net. Watertown's going to get their chances and they did with that Tifu chance and he came up large like you said. But the hat tricks have really spent some good quality time in the offensive zone so far in this game. Yeah, and, and it's about the shots on goal. They're 6-2 in favor of Danbury right now. But it's it's what you see. It's where's the puck? Well, the puck has been much more in Watertown's end or in the neutral zone. There hasn't been a lot of action in Danbury's end of the ice, and that's the way you want to keep it against a very high-powered Watertown team. But again, they're going to get their chances. The first shot they get was 6.56 into the period, and McClendon made that great save, setting the stage for Ruiz to give Danbury the 1-0 lead. Ready to get back underway here. The captain getting things started for the hat tricks. 12 and a half to play in the first. 
Danbury up by one into the hat trick zone. Jamea chasing in. This line can hurt you, and they're right back on the ice for Watertown after giving up the goal. The Hattricks turn it over at their own blue line. Justin McDonald at the near circle, stops at the point, plays it down low for Jamea, tips it back out above the goal line, and Levesque will intercept, looking to outlet to Tom Mealy. It was taken away by LaBelle. Eight minutes in to the first. Hattricks back into the zone. Corey Anderson dangles down low, feeding out in front. It goes all the way through. Levesque in the far corner, dropping down low for Tom Mealy. And it was taken away by Watertown. Gallagher and Steve Mealy getting the assists. And the hat tricks back on offense here. Offensive zone. Tom Mealy out in front, puck bouncing around. Watertown clears it to the boards, not out of the zone. Down a look to the half wall. Jackson near side in the corner, out in front. One timer, Levesque high and wide. Taken by Brandon Day for Watertown. Across the Chamelka, dropping for DiCostanzo, speeding into the hat trick zone. Crunched off the puck by Daniluk, but Chamelka finds it, bottom of the near circle. Skating all alone, out in front, off the post with the shot, and it bounces out to the point. Daniluk back down low now has it, chips it off the glass and out of play. 11.06 to play in the first one nothing hat tricks. And we will step aside here from Dan Barry. We'll be right back. One nothing hat tricks. Or oh, not. Or not. Well, it is one nothing. It is one that, nothing. That you got right. We were supposed to be right back, but we're going to stay here because we love you so much. No, no. Josh, you said right back. And when you mean right back, you mean right back. Into the zone. Ruiz <laughs> fired just wide of the net. Yeah, we just we just couldn't stay away from you here from the <laughs> rink. Ruiz at the far circle, cutting down low, rifles high and wide, and he'll chase after his own rebound, lays a huge hit on De Costanzo, and it's cleared to center. The hat trick shovel it back in, and we'll go off for a change. Ten and a half to play in the first. Watertown controlling behind its own net. Cudmore. Turns it over to Anderson in the corner. Anderson for checking hard, but McKechnie finds the puck and will carry it through. Speeding across the red line and off to Guyon on the right wing. Guyon cutting down bottom of the circle, dangling out in front, trucks into McClendon, and the net comes off. McClendon down. And McClendon still down on his knees. He's, he, he was knocked into the back of his net. Net came off the stanchion, and both Frankie and the net went backwards in it. And he was a little bit shaken at first. He was shaking his head, but he seems okay now. Comes out of the mix, and he skates, skates away from the players that are kind of milling around and tied up by the side of the net with the officials. I do not believe we're going to see a penalty here. It does look like Guyon may be a little bit shaken up. Yeah. And I don't know if I see a trainer anywhere. I think Watertown. Yeah, he's slow to get up right now. Guyon not putting much weight on no. his right leg. Yeah, he crashed hard into Frankie, and you know, Frankie was, Frankie was ready for it. Like he saw him coming, and he made the save, and then got blasted into the back of the net. But he was bracing for the contact, where Guyon, he kind of came in a little bit out of control, and he took the worst of that collision, and he has been helped off to their bench, and now. Probably heading to the dressing room right now. We'll try and keep an eye on Guyon and see if he comes back. Hattricks with the defensive zone draw one and McDonald unable to clear on the first try. It does get kicked to center on the second attempt. Halfway through the first, Hattricks at their own blue line play ahead. Anderson tips deep into the Watertown zone. Wolves control there. Tifu up the right side across the red line and to McKechnie who will chip it in and now a hat trick is down. Can't quite see who that is. Is that Corey Anderson? It might be Gallagher. Nope, Gallagher is the one uh, leaning over the 
hat trick player who's down, who I'm pretty sure was a forward, and I'm pretty sure that's Corey Anderson. Does look like Anderson now. And here trainer. comes the hat tricks trainer being helped out onto the ice by Steve Mealy. Gallagher down on a knee next to, again, we're, our view is blocked here, but I'm pretty sure it's Corey Anderson. Boy, oh boy. So what a, what a turn of events here. You know, uh, you know first it's uh, Gayon who runs into McClendon and g gets hurt, and now, now the hat tricks with a forward that's hurt. So we'll step aside as they look at Anderson down on the ice. We'll be right back here from Danbury. Well, we're back here at Danbury Arena. Jim Cerny and Josh Starr with you. And indeed, it was Corey Anderson who was laying face first on the ice. And he was finally helped back to the dressing room. Looked like uh, he left a little blood on the ice. I believe it's from his mouth. Again, it, we couldn't quite see, but it looked like from his mouth. It did look like he had some gauze in his, in his mouth almost. It must have crashed into the board somehow. Yeah. Well earlier before the back-to-back -back injuries and even before the Danbury Hattrick scored the game opening goal or actually right after Danbury scored the game opening goal the Watertown Wolves clanked one off the post and that's free coffee for all fans in attendance tonight at Danbury Arena stop by City Center Cafe on West Street in downtown Danbury for a cup of coffee at their full coffee bar or for all your breakfast and lunch favorites there's no better place for your morning or afternoon pit stop then City Center Cafe. Speaking of that first goal by Johnny Ruiz, you talk about the captain coming up big. You know, you have an injury depleted lineup. You've lost seven of nine. You're playing the top team in the league. Your captain, your best player, needs to come through, right? And he and he did. His first goal in five games. That's the longest stretch this season that he went without scoring a goal. Though he did have six assists during the past four games. He had a nine-game point streak end on Wednesday night, and he's right back on the score sheet tonight. 9.40 to go in the first, and we're finally back underway. Hattricks win the draw in their own zone. McGallagher can't clear it past McDonald. But down low is cross-ice feed. Uh, hits off a stick and goes in the air into the far corner. Behind the net, Mafus. Mafus stopped by Gallagher. Lazaro takes over for the Hattricks, working his way up the far boards taken away by McDonald for Watertown and turned right back down low. Steve Mealy ahead, back to Watertown, tip in front, Mafus kicked away by Gallagher, sliding in front of the net, and the Hattricks find the puck with Tom Mealy at the circle, who will play ahead to Kuznetsov. Speeding across the Watertown line, gets wide in the zone and flings one. It's stopped by LaBelle and played behind for Lane King. Under nine to play in the first, one nothing Hattricks. King out to McDonald, who's stopped at the Hattricks line. Danilok intercepts at center, pushes ahead for Tom Mealy, dropping it for Kuznetsov, powers down low. Now Jackson in front, scores! He fanned on the first attempt, and he was able to slide it past Cohen, just trickling by. It's 2-0 Hattricks. 8.39 to go in the first, 
and Brett Jackson scores his sixth of the year. It was a pretty passing play right there, beginning with Daniluk getting it up ice to Mealy, and then Mealy dropping to Kuznetsov. I thought Kuznetsov was going to rip the shot, and so did Cohen, the goaltender. He overplayed uh, Kuznetsov, figuring that he was going to shoot it, and said the pass to the wide open Jackson. And you think Jackson's just going to flip it into the wide open cage, Josh? But as you said, he whiffed on the shot that allowed Cohen to come back, but. Jackson was able to slide the slide his second attempt underneath the sprawling goaltender. A little bit more difficult than it should have been, but it counts nonetheless a big 2-0 early lead for Dan Barry. Hattricks will take it. Jackson back on the ice here after the goal. Into the Hattrick zone. Chamelka plays it down low, and it's the Hattricks intercepting Mike Lopez, carrying through center. Left to right, chips into the far corner. White Duck in barreling in below the goal line. Now Jackson out in front. Chance high off of Cohen. And actually it looks like Watertown has changed goaltenders here. It is White who has taken over in goal for Watertown. As Dika Stanzo sealed hard off the boards by McDonald in the Hattrick zone. And Hattricks will carry out. Left to right, Lopez dumps in. Harley White in the cage for Watertown now. Yeah, Cohen's, uh, Cohen's on the bench. He's standing up. He's still wearing his mask. So maybe he expects to go back into this game. But Brent Clark with the quick hook. 2-0 hat tricks. Watertown not used to playing from behind. The stingiest defense in the league, giving up just 77 goals over 25 games this year. Tifu into the hat-trick zone, swing to the right circle, drops at center point. Coachman flings toward the net, tipped in front and wide. McClendon may have gotten a piece. Ruiz up the near board, 7-10 to play in the first. Levesque pushes to center, Delina takes over there. And Tifu will carry into the hat-trick zone. Lazaro stops him there and will dump it out to center. McKechnie on it at his own blue line. Both teams changing as Watertown slows things down with Lane King behind his own net to the right. Under seven to play in the first. Hattricks up two. Long pass ahead. Jameev intercepted by the Hattricks, but cleared to the neutral zone where Mafus takes over. Dropping for Jameev. Left circle. Fires. Sticked away by McClendon. Mafus has it back out in front, and it is out to center. The pass looking for McDonald went all the way to the neutral zone. Mafus right back into the hat trick zone. Across at the right circle, cutting his way down in front, stuffs it wide, and behind the net, it is Jameev dropping for Mafus, and the net comes off. 6.15 to play in the first period. Two nothing, hat tricks lead. Well, they're looking none the worse for wear. I mean, this is as good a first period as we've seen them play. As you said, and right on the mark, they've been outscored in the first period this season. It's their lowest scoring period uh, of the three uh, this season. They've really struggled to get going early in games. And here, when they've needed it most with the depleted lineup, as we've ta talked about, and now also down Corey Anderson, they found a way to build a 2-0 lead. Patrick's win the draw. And scoop out to center where King pumps it right back into the Danbury end. Daniluk out to Tom Mealy who tips the center. LaBelle carries there and his pass intercepted by Steve Mealy. Cutting into the Watertown zone. Tom trying to glove it down. Cannot and the Wolves outlet. Three on two for Watertown. McDonald off to Mafus right side. Back down low. McDonald out in front. Had a wide open net but Jameev couldn't find the pass. Back to the point. Mafus cutting into the slot. Hit by Kuznetsov and Mealy. And now the shot flung on from King. Gloved by McClendon. 5.37 to go in the first two nothing hat tricks lead. And again, not to belabor the point about guys out of the lineup, but you know, I thought that Danbury has enough offense to get by a couple games without Gesso in the lineup. Where I really was concerned, and, and we'll see how the game plays out, was missing your top defensive pair in Atwell and Brown. And so far, I think they've done a very, very good job in their own end as a five-man unit. Hattricks able to control the draw. 
And they're using their depth tonight with Lopez getting some ice time here along with Jackson scoring the goal. White Duck now in the neutral zone. Will turn it over as Watertown comes to center. Taken off the puck is Day. French making that play and pushing to center. DeCostanzo right back on it for Watertown. Stuffed at the line. Two players aside, battle right in front of the Hattricks bench at the blue line. French digging away at it for the Hattricks and will win that battle. Back to Jackson, who goes across far side. Johnny McDonald carrying into the Watertown zone. Dropping for Lopez. Back to McDonald. Pass in front. Bounces behind the net. Low, rather, White Duck behind. Gets crunched, and it is Watertown to outlet. McKechnie through center. Across the Hattricks line, dangling by McDonald. Working his way down low. Off a skate in front, and the Hattricks scoop it out, but not past the blue line. At the corner now behind the net, sealed off is McKechnie, but Tifu controls. Back to the point, Coachman all the way around the bend, back around near side in the corner. McKechnie chasing after it with French. Guyon coming in as well, who's back on the ice. And the Hattricks can't get the puck past the neutral zone. Now on the second chance, it's swatted deep toward the Watertown zone. Wolves right back into the... Hattrick's end, four minutes to play in the first. Daniluk struggling behind his own cage, plays it to the far side. A player goes down behind, the arms up against the Hattricks, and it will be a penalty against Danbury. High sticking the call as Tifu went down it. It almost looked like a it almost looked like a follow-through to me, but we'll talk about it on the other side here as we step aside. 356 to go in the first, two-nothing hat tricks. For a comfortable stay with great amenities, the only choice is the La Quinta by Wyndham here in Danbury. Ask for the Hattrick's friends and family rate. You can't beat it. La Quinta. Hattrick's to the penalty kill for the first time tonight. Danilo got for high sticking, and it will be the first test for the Hattrick's in this game. A league leading 26.6% power play for Watertown. Taking the ice now, the Hattrick sixth in the league at 77.2% on the kill. Hattricks do win the draw. Tom Mealy is able to just clear it to center. Tifu couldn't keep it in. He'll drop it back to his own line to Mafoots. 10 seconds into the penalty, 340 to go in the first period. Hattricks down low in their own zone, back out in front on the power play, Watertown with a chance in front. It was cleared by the hat tricks. 30 seconds in to this power play for Watertown, 3.20 to go in the first. Hat tricks up two, Mafus slowly making his way through center. Off to the left wing, Tifu can't control at the line, is stood up and the hat tricks clear. All the way back down, White out of the net, will play the puck, 45 into the power play. McDonald streaking through center, will chip it into the Hattrick zone. Guyon back down low. Guyon working his way through, and it's Tifu who comes away with the puck on the near side. Center point, Mafus to the right circle. McDonald back to Mafus. Playing catch with McDonald. He'll go down low. Jamea far side, next to the net. Back to the center point. Mafus winds blast, and it's stopped by McClendon. Tifu has it along the near half wall. 45 seconds left on the power play. Tifu. Down low, and the backhand from McDonald, side of the net, stopped by McClendon. 39 seconds to go on the penalty. 2 nothing hat tricks and two and a half to go in the period. Good penalty killing for the most part, and especially by McClendon so far. Yeah, absolutely. For the most part is the right thing because there was a little breakdown there at the end uh, of that last sequence that found McDonald wide open to the side of the net, and he was one-on-one -on -one against McClendon and backhanded it into his chest to break for the hat tricks because McDonald was left wide open. 
Watertown right back on the puck. 25 left on the power play. Guyon side of the net, far side, working his way behind to Tifu, top of the left circle, across Mafus. Back to Guyon, near side, bottom of the ring. He had it hop over his stick. Tifu, center point to the high slot. McDonald leaving it for Guyon's one timer wide. McDonald back in the slot, loses control of the pucks. Stefanson in the corner, working it free with four seconds left on the kill. McDonald for the hat trick, scooping it along the boards to Levesque, who will be able to clear out to center. Hat tricks get the kill with 150 to go in the first period. Late in the first frame, King. Far circle, back in front, two Wolves collide. Tafu comes away with the puck, down low, and now Steve Mealy comes away with it. Levesque streaking across the line, two on one for the Hattricks. Levesque, right circle, surveying, will work his way around, white wraparound try, and stopped at the side of the net. Levesque now dropping his gloves and looking to go after King behind. Danbury. Oh, so close to a three-goal lead with 124 left, but Levesque being patient and maybe just ran himself out of space. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. You know, he was so patient, had no problems with that because nobody was sprinting back on the back check. So it was a two-on-one with Kuznetsov, and he was patient, patient, patient. But as he's come, he's still coming in. He's still gliding in. He got closer to the net, and as you said, he kind of took himself out of the option to go to Kuznetsov. And then the goalie, uh, White, was able to play him perfectly one-on-one -on -one and really take away uh, a shooting opportunity. So a missed opportunity there for Levesque Kuznetsov and the hat tricks. They'll have an offensive zone draw with Jackson to take. 120 to go in the period. He's unable to win it. Watertown controls. McKechnie skates out of his own end. Up the left wing into the hat trick zone. Lopez takes over for Danbury behind the net. Stefanson outlets to White Duck who tips the center. Jackson controls into the zone. And he'll fling it on and run into the goaltender. That'll cause some trouble with one minute left in the period. Two nothing hat tricks and Jackson taking an extra shot there on White as he skated in. Yeah, you, you gotta be a little bit more disciplined there. I don't think they're gonna call a penalty but they easily could have called a penalty there, Josh. And you gotta stay disciplined. I know the emotions run high between these two teams. I mean, they've seen so much of each other already this season, and we've seen a lot of chippy stuff in some of these games. And of course, the alter, the big altercation that took place in the third period Wednesday night in Watertown. But you can't be doing that. The, you know, you can't be taking shots at the goaltender right as the whistle's being blown or right afterwards. Danbury's very fortunate that they're not on the kill right now. Patrick's dump a player in the corner. It was Laketka taking it. Gallagher shot from the point, tipped high and wide off the glass and into the corner, Ruiz. Back to the point, Lazaro fires in, tipped wide, Levesque rebound, try. Oh, what a stop from White. Levesque had the whole net to shoot at and White sprawled across with the left hand and the glove and robbed Levesque. 40 Har seconds left, what a save. Yeah, Harley White was laying face down on the ice. He's facing the shooter but literally his chest is on the ice. The only thing he could do was, was throw up his arms, throw up his glove, and he was able to just flat out rob Nick Levesque from, what, five feet away, six feet away. Uh, a glorious opportunity, and what a save that is. Because a late goal here in the first to give Danbury a 3-0 lead would have been absolutely crushing for Watertown. And that save was a huge one by White, who's come off the bench and has so far kept Danbury off the board since replacing Cohen. The Hattricks have another offensive zone draw here. and We'll try to put one more test on White before this period ends. 11 to 10 shots in advantage for the Hattricks. They can't win the draw, though, as Day carries out to center and chips it forward. Looking for it, Chamelka. Hattricks still... Can't find that puck at center. Now it's turned over by Watertown. Bunnell carries in, winding up and lost control. Side of the net, White aggressively playing the puck out of his net and will spring forward to Day. 20 seconds left in the period. Hattricks in their own zone. Day pinned up against the boards by Gallagher in the corner. Ruiz comes away to clean up the puck and the Hattricks will skate out to center. Ruiz winding and rifling one from center just wide in the net. 
It will bounce out and Lane King will outlet off a hat trick's stick and deep into the zone as the horn sounds. Two nothing hat tricks after the first and it is a good start for the hat tricks tonight. Usually not in front at the end of the yeah. first period. Outscored this season by 12 in the first period but outscoring Watertown two nothing tonight in the first and the hat tricks will head to the room Pretty happy with their start. Yeah, absolutely. If I'm Dave McIsaac, I go into that room and I say, more of the same, please, boys. You know, moving forward, uh, you know, Danbury had the puck more often. When they didn't have the puck, I thought that they did a good job making it difficult for Watertown to enter the zone. Watertown still got their opportunities, and when they did, Frankie McClendon, I thought, put together a very, very strong, solid first period, but he didn't have to stand on his head because Danbury did a really good job limiting Watertown's uh, chances and the Watertown offensive zone time. Uh, really, it's, it's exactly the way you want to play against Watertown. You want to have it more than they do. You want to win your puck battles. You want to stand them up at the blue line. And again, it, it wasn't a perfect period, but for the most part, I thought Danbury really, really executed that game plan well. The Hattricks will probably need a couple more saves from McClendon yes. before the night's over. We'll step aside here as we head to the second period. 2 nothing Hattricks after one.
Just about ready for period number two here from Danbury Arena. Josh Starr with Jim Cerny. Two nothing hat tricks after one, and it was maybe the best first period the hat tricks have played in a, quite some time. Yeah, certainly really. in a while, right? Uh, absolutely, and, and we talked about it quite a bit, uh, you know, in that first 20 minutes, and then when the period ended, uh, you know, I'm real impressed with them. Now you got to keep it up because this Watertown team is is a team that will take advantage of your mistakes. And we saw that last Thursday. Because remember, Danbury got off to a pretty good start. It was 0-0 after one. And then Danbury actually opened the scoring in the second period. And then, boom, they got undisciplined. Frankie McClendon let in that one goal he probably would have wanted back. So it was 1-1. And then all of a sudden, the parade to the penalty box. And Watertown made Danbury pay. He fell behind by two. And they never caught up in losing that game 5-3. So... You know, you kind of have to look at that as an example of what you do not want to replicate uh, here moving forward in this game. Still 40 minutes away uh, from finishing and a lot of hockey to go. But certainly you want to follow up on that strong first period. And, you know, another goal or two here. You really want Watertown more on their heels. Again, you know, Watertown's only lost three games all season. Two of them, two of them have come against the Danbury Hattricks right here at Danbury Arena. Hattricks generally get better as the game goes on too. A plus 10 goal differential in the second and a plus 14 goal differential in the third. In the first, they're minus 12, but they got out of it up to nothing and looking to continue that through the final 40 minutes here. A little bit of a delay here with the ice behind the Watertown net. It is white still in goal for Watertown, so Luke Cohen gets the early pull after Two goals allowed, and the hat tricks maybe seeming like they have the Wolves on their heels a little bit, especially after that first period. Yeah, Coach Brent Clark clearly didn't like at least the second goal, which I can understand because Cohen was way out of position on the Jackson goal. Now he scrambled back, and, and he almost made a great save, but the puck went underneath him and in. But, you know, he really couldn't be blamed on the first goal. Ruiz's blast, I know it was kind of far out, but that was a bomb off the stick of Johnny Ruiz, and I don't think you fault the goaltender too much there, even though he probably had a pretty clear look at it. The second goal was not as great because he was out of position, so I thought it was a pretty quick hook, but it could also could have been a message to the team as well that Brent Clark was not happy with Watertown's start to the game. So he went to Harley White, who began the year with Binghamton this season, played two games with them, and then uh, signed here in Watertown when he got released. Uh, or was claimed on waivers by Watertown. And he comes in, he's made one start for Watertown. It was Sunday against his former team, Binghamton. He made 36 saves in a 6-3 win. And since replacing Cohen in that first period, uh, he kept Danbury off the scoreboard and I thought looked pretty sharp for a guy that came in cold. Doing some ice maintenance here as the hat tricks... It, it, Luke Cohen, you talk about you know, out of position on that Jackson goal. He, he was really aggressive in the net. White seems like more of a reserve, try and just stay in his crease kind of yeah, area yeah. goaltender. But Cohen was all over his zone there, kind of Brodor-esque a little bit. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, we, we saw that uh, last week when he, when he played here uh, against Danbury. I thought he was really good last week in that 5-3 win. Uh, but he is very aggressive, super aggressive, and he seems to like the contact, too. He initiates contact with the opposing forwards. You're right. White is seems to be a completely opposite type of goaltender from Cohen. Underway in the second. Tifu in his own zone, carrying left to right ahead to Guyon, who gets by Benel into the hat-trick zone, winds, fakes the shot, now goes down low behind the net. Stefanson for the hat tricks along the far boards to Ruiz who tips it and does just get it out of the zone. Half a minute into the second. Hat tricks up 2-0. Stefanson behind his own net. Starting the rush to Ruiz. Ahead to Bunnell into the Watertown zone trying the slick pass in for Levac. It was intercepted and cleared all the way out. Stefanson across to connect with that clear attempt and the Hattricks will retreat back into their own zone. Gallagher skating up the left wing through center across the line, speeding down low, cutting his way out in front, tries the shot, stopped by the chest of 
White and he'll cover up on the rebound. Gallagher showing some speed there down the wing, 102 into the period. Yeah, the tall, lanky defenseman. He, he got a step and then he took it hard to the net going coast to coast there. A little, well, what do you think, a little Kale McCarr or you know, maybe a little Adam Fox? That was, that was pretty sweet, a little McAvoy maybe. That was a sweet move there. We haven't seen that from Gallagher in his seven previous games with Danbury. He's not generally getting in on the offense, no. but did so there right back into the hat trick zone. Day crunched into the glass by McDonald. Back to the point, a broken stick in front. The puck goes all the way through. 120 into the second, 2-0 hat tricks. Bryce French behind his own net, bats it towards the far corner where Kuznetsov will fly it to center. Prejant at his own blue line across to Cudmore and ahead to McKetney into the hat-trick zone. High slot and the wrister is gloved by McClendon. 140 into the second, 2-0 hat-tricks and McClendon's first stop of this period. We should point out that Corey Anderson did not uh, return to the ice here to start the second period for the hat-tricks. The uh, hat-tricks forward who's really been red hot as of late. Nine goals in his last 10 games. He went down and out of the game at 10-15 of the first uh, when he took a cut to the mouth. So still no word on if he will return, but he is not on the bench to start the second period. Hattrix will have to adjust their lines. Kodiak, White Duck, right to left, deep into the Watertown zone. White across behind the net to King, who will outlet to McDonald. McDonald streaking across, his pass off a body to Jamev, shot, stopped by McClendon, rebound, try McClendon, makes the second stop on McDonald, in down low, McDonald had a chance there on the rebound, but McClendon making both stops, and a big one at that for the Hattricks. Uh, McClendon put himself in a bad spot there, he made the good first save, and then he tried to poke the puck out of his crease instead of grabbing it and holding on to it, and he pushed it right into McDonald to, of course, put the shot on net, uh, the rebound, and a real good second save by Frankie McClendon. Hattrix can't win the draw in the near wall. Lane King back to the point, Mafoos. Mafoos looking for the tip in front through the goal mouth. McDonald couldn't find it. The Hattrix come back the other way. Levesque carrying through center across to Bunnell. High slot, Bunnell rifles, and it's stopped by White at the top of his crease. Two and a half in to the second. Two nothing hat tricks. Bunnell getting a chance there. His real first action offensively tonight. Yeah, and, and Gordy Bunnell, you know, he's looking for one right now. He has one goal in his last nine games. He's still, you know, better than a point a game player for the hat tricks. But you know, you you got one goal, nine games, and you're a scorer like Bunnell. You're you're itching to get that next one, and he almost got it there, but shot it right into the breadbasket of the goaltender. Recorded his 100th point a couple weeks ago, Gordy Bunnell, and looking for more here tonight, but unable to convert on that chance. Hattricks deep in their own zone. Levesque banks it ahead to Ruiz. Has Bunnell on the left wing into the zone. At the top of the circles, Rister is gloved down by White. Side of the net, Levesque trying the wraparound. Now the turnaround shot is stopped in front. Levesque has it back at the circle. His shot off a shin pad and out to center. Daniluk will take over there. His cross ice feed to Levesque. Wrists high and wide. Now Tom Mealy left circle. Down low looking for Steve behind. The net has him. He is sealed off by Coachman in the corner. Tom Mealy lays a hit, but Watertown gets out of the zone. Chips in, bounces in front of McClendon. He'll make a waist high glove stop with that as it was going wide of the net. Three and a half into the period. Two nothing hat tricks. And a couple chances in the, in the last couple minutes for the hat tricks. Frankie looked like a uh, pretty slick fielding first baseman right there, scooping that one out, huh? Making the pick out of the dirt. Yeah, I was impressed. The multi-talented Frankie McClendon. It's almost spring training. Well, maybe. Let, let's hope. Maybe. Let's hope. Patrick's with the defensive zone draw near side. They can't win it. Tifu along the hash marks. Shot in front, tipped high in the air in the slot. Turn around, Tika stands out, stopped by McClendon into the corner. Tifu controls and is stripped by Tom Mealy. He'll scoop it out of the zone to Kuznetsov. Skating across the Watertown line, swinging to the bottom of the circle, all the way through the goal mouth, off the boards and back out. Prejant skating through center, across the center ice logo, into the hat-trick zone, leaving to the right wing, Dika Stanzo, out of his reach, back in front from Prejant. And the shot. Wide of the net, four minutes in to the second. 
Tifu in the corner, down by two, watered down looking for a goal. Tifu goes down, a stick in his skates, and the pass goes out to center. Watertown trying to get back into the zone. Jackson flags down a pass. Now will draw a penalty. Good job by Brett Jackson as Watertown touches up. Able to use that full frame for Brett Jackson at 5-6 to grab that puck down and <laughs> draw the penalty, keeping his legs moving. And the Hattricks head to their first for rare electric power play of the night. 15-39 to go in the second. 2-0 Hattricks. And it'll be Guillaume going to the penalty box there. Tripping, yeah, he, he doesn't trip him. Jackson's off to the races. I like that full frame five, and then you got to drop the five six on him. He had to use all of it, <laughs> and he did. Gallagher at the left point on the power play. D to D to McDonald. Surveying, walking to the center of, of the blue line. Down low, Levesque, side of the net, lost control of the pass. Bennell has it right back down, bottom of the far circle to Levesque. High slot, McDonald's wrister off in it. Skate and into the corner. Behind the net, Levesque crunched off, and his stick broke from that hit. The Hattricks have the puck back, right point. McDonald down low to Bennell, working his way back out high, part of the zone to Ruiz at the circle, fires, stopped by White. Steve Mealy has it left side of the net. Down low to Bennell. Bennell, far ring, all the way across to Steve Mealy, dealing with Levesque's broken stick. 45 seconds into the power play. Steve Mealy slowing things down. The pass back to Ruiz at the point goes all the way down. And McClendon will have to race to the corner to grab that puck. Halfway through the power play for the Hat Tricks at 20.5%. This season, third in the league, the Watertown penalty, 83.3%. Second in the league, and Mafus able to win the puck in the neutral zone, and Watertown will hammer down. 40 seconds left on the power play for the Hat Tricks. 14 15 to go in the second period. Hat Tricks unable to get back into the zone here as Watertown. And Sliketka hammer right back down. 25 seconds left on the power play. Six minutes gone in the second. 2-0 Hattricks. Last rush with 15 to go on the power play. Steve Mealy. Fans on the pass will now backhand down low for Jackson. He lets it go to Kuznetsov behind the net. Jackson back to Kuznetsov to the point. Stefanson flings one. It's blockered away by White. And cleared to center. Guillaume out of the box. And the hat tricks unsuccessful on the power play. Tom Mealy right back into the zone. Kuznetsov takes over. Now Stefanson winds. And it's wide of the net on the shot from the tall defenseman. Watertown clears out to center. Stefanson right back on it. 13-18 to go in the second period. He's unable to control. It's cleared out of play behind the net. And they'll see if this is a delay of game call when we come back. 13-12 to go in the second period. And the Hat Tricks leading 2-0 here against the Wolves. Dr. Matt Hartsburg is an official member of the Danbury Hattricks medical team. Hartsburg Chiropractic is cutting edge chiropractic care right here in your backyard. Check out Dr. Matt. And the Connecticut National Guard is a proud sponsor of your Danbury Hattricks as well. Well, they're gonna say the puck deflected out of play, so no penalty on Watertown. 6.48 into the second period, and now they, now they will call the penalty. <laughs> the, one, the one referee was repeatedly motioning that it was deflected to go into the crowd. And now Tifu's in the box. Tifu will serve the penalty. Well, 
They have 44 up, that's LaBelle. Tif I don't know if Tifu was the one who played that puck, but we will have another Hattrick's power play here. McDonald right off the face off the shot through traffic in front and Levesque is able to get in the way, but White stops that puck. Hattricks win the draw. Gallagher to Ruiz near half wall. Down low in the corner. Levex pass back to Ruiz, tipped out to center. 15 seconds into the Hattricks power play. Gallagher at his own blue line. Skating it out to center, dropping to the red line where Bunnell fans on the dump in. Now we'll get it across to McDonald. Into the zone, Johnny McDonald to the circle. Levex Rister stopped by White and covered up 12.38 to go, 125 on the power play, Hattrick's up two. And again, the official penalty is Tifu for the delay of game, so they just have the wrong number up on, uh, on the scoreboard right now. But big power play opportunity here. Interesting with Gesso not in the lineup, suspended and with Anderson now injured. Uh, Hattrick's have been starting each of their first two power plays with the traditional three forwards, two defensemen, though now they're going four forwards and one defenseman with the second unit. But don't have some of your top power play guys now in the lineup with Jesso and Anderson out. That trick's carrying through center. Kuznetsov to Steve Mealy across Jackson, far side, all the way back down low. Steve Mealy has it in the near corner. To the point, Kuznetsov back down low. Steve Mealy looking for Jackson's side of the net. It was tipped away. 50 seconds left on the power play for the hat tricks. Kuznetsov at the near half wall, back center point. Lazaro pushes along to Tom Mealy, far circle. Jackson down low, back to the hash marks. Tom Mealy along the far wing. All the way across Kuznetsov, near side to the slot. It's tipped away, and Coachman finds it and will shove it all the way down. 25 seconds left on the kill for Watertown. 11 and a half to go in the second period. 2-0 Hattricks, already 0 for 1 on the power play, looking to convert here. Kuznetsov across the Benel left circle, looking to feed Levesque at the far circle. It was intercepted and cleared all the way down. Five seconds to go on the power play. 11-15 in the period. Behind his own net, Johnny McDonald starts the break as Tifu exits the box. It's back to even strength. Pinnell up the left wing, streaking across the line, slips by one, and now his feed goes all the way through the goal mouth into the corner. Stefanson keeps it in at the point. Levesque looking for it down low. LaBelle tipped it away at the last moment, and it's ahead for Day, who passes across to LaBelle. Back to Day, and he'll skate through center. Into the hat trick zone, right circle, snaps one. Glove by McClendon with 10.46 to go, and the hat trick's up two. Well, the hat tricks will be on the road tomorrow, but they've returned to the, for uh, three games against Carolina. Should be a big, big series against them. Three games in two and a half days. Friday night, Saturday night here at Danbury Arena, and then Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Uh, here at Danbury Arena against Carolina. Really, really important series uh, because Carolina right now, right behind them, fourth place in the Federal Prospects Hockey League. Hattricks can't win the draw in their own zone. Tipped in front, McClendon kicks out the left leg. Puck is still loose in front, looking for it, and McClendon able to cover. Hectic in front of the Hattricks net, but McClendon saw the puck the whole time and able to make that stop. 10.37 to go. Hattricks still up two. And to get your tickets for next week's games, next weekend's games against Carolina, go to danburyhattricks.com. Be the first time Carolina is in town yeah. this season. Hattricks have gone there twice. In front of the Hattricks net, a penalty being called against Danbury. Slaketka back into his own zone. And Watertown carries into the Hattricks end. Shamelka out in front looking for McKechnie. It's intercepted by White Duck, and it will be a penalty on the Hattricks. 10-14 to play in the second. 2-0 Hattricks. And Watertown will get its second chance on the power play. Slashing appears to be the call on Bryce French. And the Hattricks 
Head to the PK. And they only have a 2-0 lead in Watertown. Again, best power play in the league. League's leading goal scorer, uh, point getter as well, in Justin McDonald out there. So big kill. Big opportunity for Watertown, but a big kill set up here for Danbury. Matrix won the draw, cleared all the way down. 15 seconds already gone on the power play for Watertown. Tifu leaving for McDonald, back to Tifu, streaking up the left wing into the zone, across the McDonald, all alone in front, he scores. Just like that, Justin McDonald left all alone in front on the power play, and Watertown cuts the lead in half. It's 2-1 hat tricks on McDonald's 29th of the season. I don't want to be the guy that said, I told you so, Josh, but I told you, Josh. I told you so. You, you, you can't be giving this team those kind of opportunities. You know, a penalty back behind the play. You put them on the power play, and McDonald's been pretty quiet so far tonight. You just don't shut him down and keep him quiet all night. You can't give him those opportunities. Here he gets left wide open, walks in one-on-one, -on -one and does not make a mistake. His, his league-leading 29th goal and his league-leading 58th point of the season. Hat tricks right back in their own zone. Out in front, Mafuz overskated the puck, had a wide-open chance, gets the puck to the half wall. King takes over, another penalty coming up against the hat tricks. LaBelle down low on the delayed call. Jameev walking by and Mealy intercepts. The hat tricks will go right back to the penalty kill, a hooking call against Danbury. It might be Bryce French again. It looks like it is. 9.20 to go in the second period. And the hat tricks lead just by one. And we will step aside here from Danbury. Two to one, Watertown. Well, maybe we won't step aside again. We should be stepping aside. And... Now they will. Yeah, it, it, and Brent Clark is airing out the uh, referee, and the referee was patting his chest saying, that's on me, that's my fault, I should have known. So we will indeed take a break with the hat tricks leading 2-1. to one. Well, you want the best, now you got it. Jersey Mike's is here, and be sure to stop by at their locations at both Brookfield and Ridgefield, or when you come to a game at Danbury Arena. Jersey Mike's, wow, that's good. Now well, Danbury's gonna need a wow, that's good penalty kill right here. Leading two to one and putting Watertown right back on the power play. Patrick's unable to win the draw. Mafus out in front. It Puck hits McDonald up high. Down low, he'll stay on the ice, digging away in the corner. Back to the point, Mafus. Walking the line, Mafus 15 seconds into the power play. Off to Jameev, intercepted by Manel and out of the zone. Manel has Levesque streaking, but they couldn't get the pass there. With 1.30 to go on the power play for Watertown. It is Bryce French off for hooking as Jameev carries into the hat-trick zone. Stopped by Gallagher. Levesque ahead to Benell, who will skate to center and clear into the zone. A fluttering shot in on White. He struggles to control it at first, and now we'll start the rush. McDonald left to right as Gallagher gets intercepted, and it was the shot from McDonald who hits McClendon in front, able to make the stop. Back to the point, Mafuse halfway through the power play. Tifu left circle, shot tipped away by Ruiz, the active stick. Halfway through exactly on the Watertown power play. Hattrick still lead by one with 8.19 left in the second. I don't know about you. I, I was thinking that could have been an interference penalty right there. It took Gallagher completely out of the play as he got hit. 
Uh, and then, you know, created a one-on-one, a, -on -one, a break-in against the goaltender, and McClendon comes up with a very, very important save right there. I, I mean, to me, that's, that's a classic interference call, or should have been. Watertown gets away with one, and the hat tricks. Still on the penalty kill. McDonald wins the draw as the shot goes wide off the referee in the corner. Hattrix can't clear up the far boards. McDonald keeps it in to Mafus. Right point, center point, Tifu through traffic. McLennan didn't see it, but it went wide. The Hattrix looking for it behind the net. Watertown comes away with it. Guillaume uh, out to the point. Tifu all the way around. McDonald to Mafus. Back to McDonald at the circle. Right side, down low, Jamaev, side of the net. Backhand looking out in front, couldn't connect. 25 seconds left on the power play for Watertown. McDonald out to Guillaume, one timer stopped by McClendon and the hat can't clear. Mafus keeps it in with 15 to go. Guillaume near the hash marks along the right side to McDonald, back out in front. Jackson intercepts and the hat get out of the zone. Five seconds left on the kill for Danbury Ruiz into the zone, flings in on goal, it was stopped by the glove of White with one second left on the kill. Hattrick's able to survive the second chance for Watertown with 7.20 left. Their one goal lead stays intact. Yeah, we referenced what happened last Thursday here in this building. Danbury had a one nothing lead in the second period and then Watertown tied the game and then went to four consecutive power play opportunities and scored twice and took a stranglehold on that game. Here though, Danbury, they did allow one power play goal, but they kill off the second power play. A very, very important kill. French out of the box and the Hattricks back to full strength. Behind the Hattricks net, it's McKechnie out in front. The Hattricks intercept. Tom Mealy across right side. Kuznetsov into the zone. His cross ice pass tips high in the air. Glove down by Chemelka. His pass intercepted by Kuznetsov, but turned right back over. Chemelka into the Hattrick zone. Off Stefanson, out in front, tip, and they score! McKechnie in front. Chamelka able to force the turnover at his own blue line and carried it in. Fed McKechnie in front, he tips it right under the arm of McClendon. It's all tied at two with 6.46 to go in the second, and the Hattrick's lead has evaporated. Cole McKechnie's 14th of the season, and boy, is that deflating. You know, you have the big penalty kill, and you kind of dodge the bullet, Watertown on the power play, and then you, know, you make a mistake in your own end, and it ends up in the back of your net. And can't blame Frankie McClendon for that one. Good redirection by McKechnie again, his 14th of the season. Hat tricks. Have to regroup here, all squared at two. Jackson across the line, skating into the Watertown end, out in front to Lopez, it was tipped away by White and skied high in the air, bouncing at the red line and taken by King into the hat-trick zone. King at the far hash marks, playing it back, center point LaBelle winding, now leaves it for McDonald, one timer sliding to his left, McClendon makes the stop, and he looks maybe a little bit shaken up, and that one stung him a little bit, 6-11 to go. McClendon, a huge stop there on McDonald. Yeah, important save again, but made by Frankie McClendon. Got a little bit of time. He did have time to get over from right to left, uh, and he was in good position as McDonald uh, sent that one in from just inside the blue line. Patrick's defensive zone draw near side circle, won by Watertown. Jamaev trying to find some space, crunched down by Gallagher into the corner. One timer in front, Mafus. It was tipped high and wide. He may have flubbed the shot but the hat tricks giving up another prime chance there and as good as that first period was the second period just a little bit unraveling in their own zone yeah and again you know to get the parade to the box you know back-to-back -back penalties have hurt them two goals three minutes apart McDonald is 29th from Mafus and Tifu and then McKechnie is 14th from Day and Chemelka. Levesque blocked that shot carried to center this Feed for Benell was intercepted, but Levesque right back into the offensive zone. In the corner, out in front, looking for Benell. It went through his legs and back out. 5.40 to go, Lazaro races back for it, tied at two in the second. He's stripped of the puck in the corner. McDonald gets the puck to Jamea. Back down low, McDonald out in front, all alone, Mafus and McClendon was able to tip the pass away. Back behind the Hattrick's net, McDonald for 
Watertown has the puck and it's turned over by the Wolves. Looks like a penalty. Oh yeah, Dan Barry's got six players on the ice. They had a full six players too, all yeah. in their own zone. Yeah, they were all active participants. Yeah, that, that was a pretty easy call and boy, that's, that's a big mistake. Now you're putting Watertown, who's really taken the momentum here in the second period in the last few minutes. And now you put them back on the power play in a 2-2 game. It's their now fourth power play for Watertown. And the hat tricks now down low in front. The chance by McDonald stopped by McClendon as Ruiz finds the puck and clears right away on the faceoff. Almost a prime chance for Watertown. Down into their own zone. Hattricks the bench minor. Too many men as Watertown carries through center. Left to right. Into the Hattricks zone. Mafus dangling his way in. And the backhand stop by McClendon. A big stop there from the netminder for the Hattricks. Still on the penalty kill in the corner. Stefanson finds the puck and lofts it all the way down. 4.35 to go in the second. 1.15 on a power play for Watertown. As Guillaume has the puck stopped in his skates, he slows it down at center. King for Watertown. Off of Steve Mealy's skate, halfway through the power play for the Wolves. Back around the far side, McDonald ahead, and Tifu will control. Tifu working his way through center, off to Guillaume, and now Tifu in the corner. Guillaume back down low, King all the way across, McDonald fires, and Bunnell blocks that one on the inside of his leg. Maybe his hand, and the Hattricks are able to clear it down. 3.55 to go in the second, 35 on the Watertown power play. 2-2, Watertown was down 2-0 to start this second period. Tifu into the Hattrick zone, lost control in on McClendon, who will cover up, and Tifu crashes in. He's taken to the ice as the Hattricks took exception to that. That's what you got to do. You got to protect your goalie, right? Can't have somebody touching them, you know, even if they're, you know, uh, it's not a penalty what, what was done there, you know, against McClendon. But you know what? You don't take it. You, you stand up for your goaltender. You got to do it, and that's what the hat tricks do here. Boy, you know, Garrett Gallagher is logging a lot of ice time. You know, he's playing his first game since December 29th, and he steps into not just easing back into the lineup, but into the top spot, the top defensive pair. And it seems like he's out there every other shift. He's played a bigger role in this one. He's heading to the penalty box now. He and Lazaro getting tons of ice time when they are in the lineup. We'll step aside here from Danbury. It's 2-2 Watertown on the power play for 26 more seconds when we come back. Hat City Physical Therapy is the physical therapy provider for your Danbury Hat Tricks. Their facility is located on Federal Road right here in Danbury. Hat City Physical Therapy is owned and operated by the medical director of the Danbury Hat Tricks, Dr. Lee Day. Dr. Lee and his staff provide outstanding physical therapy care for a range of diagnoses and problems. Give them a call for all of your orthopedic and physical therapy needs. 26 seconds left on this kill for the hat tricks. They're still sorting this out, but I, I think it's going to be even after that scrum. So, Yeah, it looks like Tifu and Gallagher are in the box, even though there was quite a bit of discussion about it. But that seems to be the case. And 
So Watertown will remain one man up in a 2-2 game with 3.44 to go here in the second period. Way too many power plays, though. Danbury, you know, this has been a theme this season. You know, discipline, and, and it seems to be, too, when Danbury takes a penalty, there seems to be two or three right behind that penalty, you know? They seem to come in bunches against them. I know it doesn't happen all the time, but it has happened quite often this season and certainly has happened here tonight and turned the second period in the favor of Watertown. The Hattricks win the draw in the neutral zone, but can't get it deep. Behind the net is Jameev. It's Gallagher and Tifu for unsportsmanlike conduct. Hattricks get the clear. Into the offensive zone, taken by Mafusa, head to King, out of the box, Kuznetsov, and the Hattricks are back to even strength. McDonald swings left at the circle, all the way across for Mafus, and the Hattricks. Able to knock that one away. Guyon in the zone still at the right point. The feed all the way through into the far corner. Mafus finds it. Jameev down low with under three to play in the second. All the way out to King, right circle. Looked away and fanned on the shot. Has it right back in the corner. Feeds to Jameev near the hash marks. Back to the point. And the hat tricks are able to get that puck out to center. The dump in from LaBelle hits his teammate Day. The hat tricks had numbers, but Mealy. Turned it over off of Kuznetsov's leg. He didn't know where the puck was. Day controls it at his own line. Ahead all the way down into the Hattrick zone. 2.31 left. McClendon will cover up. And the Hattrick still tied at two with the Wolves, but second period really controlled by Watertown. No question. Good stop there by Frankie McClendon. You know, not playing the puck. Watertown was bearing in on his net. Smart play. You know, Frankie this season is making his sixth start against Watertown. He is 0-5 against Watertown this season. Uh, despite in his debut, he had a 48 save uh, outing against Watertown. Lost that one too. So he's still looking for his first win against Watertown. Against the rest of the league, Frankie is 3-1. But 0-5 against Watertown. Hat tricks have had trouble keeping Watertown out of the net when they played. 2.08 to go in the second. Watertown averaging over five goals a game. I was going to say, they're not the only team that uh, Watertown's had success against uh, putting the puck in the net. Last two games giving up 11 total goals to Watertown and two losses. Here the Hattricks have allowed two through almost 40 minutes. A big hit against Stefanson. That's going to be a penalty on Watertown. Stefanson looked a little bit... Ginger. Yeah, he, he was that. dazed. I mean, he, he was elbowed in the side of the head. Elbow hit head, head hit glass, and uh, Stefanson was clearly shaken up. I, I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's a clear penalty, and I see Watertown, you know, uh, the captain, McDonald, is, is, he's shaking his head. He's got his palms up in the air and everything, but that that's the right call, and the referee made it. The arm went up immediately, so Chamelka's in the box, and now Big opportunity for Danbury in a 2-2 game. Regain some momentum and possibly regain the lead. The Hattricks head back to the Ferrer electric power play. With the power play goal earlier, Justin McDonald tied Johnny Ruiz for the league lead with seven power play goals. Ruiz will take this face off for the Hattricks on the power play. 140 to go in the first, and Watertown wins the draw and clears. Hattricks. On the power play, Jamelka for, for elbowing is the call. McDonald right to left for the hat tricks across to Ruiz, streaking in at the right circle, scores! Johnny Ruiz takes the league lead right back in power play goals, his eighth of the season, and all in all is 24th second tonight and the Hattricks have the lead back it's 3-2 with 122 left in the second a good hard low shot off the rush by Johnny Ruiz boy oh boy you talk about exactly what the doctor ordered for Danbury you know in, in a period that it you know the momentum clearly had swung the other way Johnny Ruiz puts Danbury back in the lead with his second of the night Huge goal by the captain. See Mealy in on a breakaway, and it's high and wide, right off the face-off. The Hattricks almost had the two-goal lead back, 
but Mealy sailed it high. Mafus into the hat trick zone across the tip in front. McLennan makes the stop with 105 left. And King turns it over to the hat tricks. Tom Mealy through center last minute in the second. Hat tricks ahead 3 2. Steve Mealy all the way across looking for Tom streaking at the back post. It was tipped away. Kuznetsov has the puck back, plays it down low for Tom Mealy. And the net comes off. 46.9 to go. LaBelle and Mealy, Tom Mealy getting into it as Mafus. Oh, Mafus just ragdolled him there. And you know, listen, I know Mealy gets under guys' skins, but his skin, he's also a guy that's not gonna typically drop the gloves and fight. And he may have just kind of instigated Mafus into taking a penalty here. And Mafus is furious as he heads down the runway towards the visiting dressing room, but Tom Mealy's gonna go with him. Tom Mealy is also gonna take a penalty here. Maybe, just maybe a little bit of embellishment from Mealy. Yeah, just a little bit, and Mafus didn't like that at all. And uh, Mafus is not a guy that you really wanna mess with too much. Over 1,300, he's just under 1,400 career penalty minutes here in the Federal League. Not a guy you want to mess with in that category. And Tom Mealy, not a fighter. He's, he's a guy that's going to get underneath your skin for sure. It's pass to Kuznetsov. Shot off a of body and taken out to center. Watertown left to right through center ice. Jameyev across into the hat trick zone. 30 seconds left in the period. Lazaro catches up to him and has. Steve Mealy shrieking down the ice, but couldn't get the pass there as King intercepts and carries out to LaBelle. Cross ice feet tipped away. McDonald chasing in after it in the Hattrick zone. 15 seconds left in the period. Hattrick's up one. King has it near half mark, hash marks, and will go all the way behind the net with five seconds left. The puck tipped in front. McClendon makes a stop on Jameev with two and a half seconds left. The puck just fell right to Jameev. And McClendon able to make the stop. That's what you call being in the right place at the right time. Good positioning by Frankie McClendon and Jamea from you know what six seven feet out just wound up and cranked that one on net. And McClendon made the save. And now with with under three seconds to go in the period, the extra skater comes on the ice for Watertown. Watertown can't win the draw. Ruiz Good able job. to do so and. Get the puck into the corner as time expires in the second. 3-2 hat tricks after 40 minutes. And it wasn't a pretty period for Danbury, but they come away still with a lead. And heading into the third period, just two goals allowed to this Watertown team and a lead heading, heading into the final frame. Yeah, they were outshot 18-9 in the second period. And it let a 2-0 lead slip away into a 2-2 game. But Johnny Ruiz with that huge power play goal and you know taking advantage of that opportunity and restoring the, the advantage to Danbury that they will carry into the second intermission and then come on out for the final 20 minutes of play. They're probably going to need more than a one goal lead. They're going to need more than three goals against the high-flying Watertown Wolves, you would think. It's going to be a... Big finish here in the final 20 minutes. Watertown won't go down without a fight. A 13 game winning streak on the line for the Wolves and the Hat Tricks. Looking to get back on track against Watertown. We'll have the final period for you after this. You're listening and watching to Hat Tricks Hockey on YouTube.
3-2 hat tricks as we are just about ready for the final 20 minutes. Josh Starr with Jim Cerny and through 40, the hat tricks have a lead over the top team in the league and just have to close it out. Yeah, absolutely. And listen, it could be, you know, if, if they're able to hold on or able to find a way to win this one, what a huge lift it would be with, you know, again, a depleted lineup. You know, they came in having lost seven out of their last nine. They last their, lost their last few head-to-head -head meetings against Watertown. And, hey, Watertown's won 13 in a row. Ruiz off the opening face-off, looking to get in on goal. And it was stopped right as he was about to be in all alone. Watertown with a three-on-two now real quick after the start of the period. Out in front, they score just like that. 18 seconds in. LaBelle out in front. Jemayev was on the other end of it, and it's 3-3. Three, three. That didn't take long. I told you <laughs> at the end of the second period, right, right as we went to the intermission, I said three's probably not going to be enough against this Watertown team, and obviously it is now not going to be. What a good rush up ice by LaBelle, Josh. I mean, that really made the play. You know, you don't see him hop up into the, into the offensive play too often, but he did there. Made a really good move and then a pretty pass. And, of course, Jemayev with the with an absolute slam dunk. And we've got a tie game. McDonald right back on the puck in the offensive zone for Watertown. 30 seconds into the period. 3-3 three, three and 35 seconds left on this four on four with Mafus and Tom Mealy in the box. McDonald circles back toward his own line. Stopped there by Steve Mealy, but Watertown still controls. 50 seconds into the period, McDonald ahead into the hat-trick zone, and they go in offside. Guillaume couldn't hold that back leg on. So you and I know that that's Josh LaBelle, but apparently they just gave an assist to a guy that hasn't played a single game this season for Watertown. They credit it to uh, an Eric Masters, but LaBelle is wearing a different jersey number tonight. But we know him. He stands out, too. He's such a... You know, a tall, lanky defenseman. Um, and, of course, we've seen a lot of Watertown this season. That was clearly LaBelle who made the play in the assist for the game-tying goal by Jamea, who has now scored 23 goals this season. One behind Johnny Ruiz. They came in tied. Ruiz has two tonight in the hat tricks. 90 seconds in uh, into this third period are all square again after taking the lead late in the second. Behind the Danbury net. Puck comes all the way around the far side. White Duck able to spring forward to Lopez into the zone. Lopez stopped along the near half wall. It is played back to the point. Jackson spins it right back down. Watertown outlets Tifu into the hat-trick zone. One-on-one, -on -one, drops it, and he tried to curl and drag and left it behind. White Duck into the zone. All the way in deep for White to play it to the side of his own net. Two minutes into the third, 3-3, three, three, the score here between the Wolves and the Hattricks. Behind his own net, Tifu slowly working up ice. LaBelle ahead, stopped by Gallagher. And it is McKechnie who comes away with the puck. Gallagher intercepts at center, springs Levesque forward into the zone, left circle, across to Ruiz, looking down low to Bunnell. It was blocked away, and Watertown outlets. Day working his way up the left wing into the zone. Day down low, backhand off the edge of the net, and he is crushed into the boards. Going right after Gallagher is Chamelka, and they're going to go. In the corner of the hat-trick zone, Gallagher throwing a couple punches. Neither player could really get a gra grasp on each other, but... Gallagher is able to send Chamelka to the ice, and they'll both go off five minutes each. Day still on all fours on the ice. He might be cut as well. Yeah, he was taken hard into the boards, but uh, the arm of the referee did not go up. There was no penalty coming against Gallagher. Again, you know, I, we don't have the benefit of seeing this again, you know, on a replay, but... Uh, it looked like it was. It looked like it was a clean hit. He he rode him hard into the boards and finished up on his hit. So he was kind of driving Day's body up, and Day kind of his skates came off the ice and he went hard into the glass there. 
And he's clearly, clearly shaken up. And then immediately Chimelka came flying in to challenge Gallagher and Gallagher got the best of Chimelka in that fight. And Day, they shaking his head. It looks like he's, looks like he's okay. But he clearly was shaken up. What a hit by Gallagher. And now let's see how, you know, how this gets sorted out. You know, does Chimelka get an instigator? Do the referees now talk it over and say Gallagher should have gotten an original minor? I, I don't think they were, I don't think that Gallagher should have gotten a minor. Well, he, he could have, but, but the referees clearly didn't have their arms up. Neither official had his arm up. And now the two captains, Ruiz of the hat tricks and McDonald of the Wolves are standing there. They're waiting. They was curious, more curious than we are, trying to get the decision. I I would think it would be a simple five and five. But there is an explanation being given right now. And there was a long conversation with the scores too, down low. McDonald seems okay with whatever decision was given, and now Ruiz is having the longer conversation with the official. And Ruiz shaking his head, arms up in the air, filling Coach Dave McIsaac in on the ruling. I, I'm assuming that Danbury wanted an instigator because Chimelka came flying in and clearly instigated by the letter of the law, instigated that fight. And now Tifu and Ruiz. Ruiz is after one referee, Tifu, is arguing with another official. But I only count four hat tricks on the ice. It will. And I count five wolves on the ice. And indeed, if, if on the scoreboard, Gallagher is getting an extra two minutes. Well, if that's the case, someone has to serve that penalty. And uh, yes. Nobody is in the box beside Gallagher. And now Lopez will skate across the ice and will serve the minor. That's a tough break there. There was not an original penalty going to be called, Josh. Well, it'll be a Watertown power play, and whether it's a break or not, they do go a man up. A quick try in front for McDonald. Now Tifu, hard angle, high off the glass, and it bounces all the way back down the ice. Just three minutes into the third period. 3-3 the score, 20 seconds into a power play for Watertown. Jamea along the near side, looking to push ahead, and it was intercepted by Stefanson and out to center. Mafus back skating into his own zone, all the way behind his own net. Skating up ice right to left across. The Hattricks line, down low behind the net, Mafus back out in front, all the way to the point, McDonald, across right point, Guillaume. Down low to the hash marks, it's Tifu. Working his way back to the top of the zone, Mafus plays catch with Tifu, winds, and the shot goes off a of body and wide into the near corner, Guillaume. Near circle, all the way across McDonald at the far rink. His shot stopped by the glove of McClendon. 53 seconds left on the kill for the Hattricks. 340. Six into this period and a big stop there for McClendon. And here, here's how the penalties got served out. Gallagher, two for boarding, five for fighting. Chimelka, five for fighting. And I'll be honest, it was borderline. I could see it being that minor penalty being given, but not when the officials were not making a call. Nobody had their arm up. There was not going to be a penalty called until after the fight. And so to me, that's, that's what I have more issue with than the actual penalty itself. A shot from Watertown blocked away and cleared to the half wall. The Hattricks not happy with the call, but still have to try to find a way to kill this off. McDonald, right point, shots stymied by Ruiz and the Hattricks can't clear. McDonald flags it down, keeps it in. At the top of the circle, Guillaume stopped from behind. Ruiz able to stick it forward. Ruiz in on a breakaway, shorthanded across the line. Two on one for the Hattricks now. Out in front, McDonald had it poked away. Watertown back checking, doing a good job. Now McDonald into the Hattrick zone, all the way across. Guillaume sails it high and wide. McClendon gets hit in the back of the head 
looking, not sure if that was fr friendly fire from McDonald or if it was Tifu skate, but McClendon got hit hard in the head. He is down in pain. Yeah, he's face first down on the ice. Second time tonight that Frankie McClendon has been shaken up. And it's a good question. It happened so fast, I did not see how he was hit. And McDonald, the hat trick defenseman, after the play was confronting Tifu, the Wolves forward. So that would lead me to believe that Tifu was the one that clipped McClendon. There's not going to be a penalty here, even though Steve Mealy now is having a conversation with the officials, and this is becoming a recurring theme. And let's see. Well, now yeah, let's wind this one back because Frankie's already down here. Here we get another look at it. So the shot goes high and wide. And McDonald has not touched him. It and was Tifu. Oh, boy. Right into the side right, of the head here. Right into the side of the head. And Will McEwen is warming up, stretching. He's got the mask on. He's stretching in front of the hat trick bench. McClendon is up, however. And looks like he's trying to make a case for staying in the game. Boy, the trainers are earning their paychecks tonight. There has been quite a few instances with players down, and, of course, Corey Anderson was knocked out of the game midway through the first period with a cut to his mouth. It looks like Frankie's going to stay in. Tifu skated by to apologize to McClendon. He's going to stay in for now. Maybe more of one of those bell rung type than actually... No, it, get, it takes a second to... Yeah, just clear to, clear your head a little yeah. bit. Anyway, there's two seconds left on the penalty for the hat tricks, and looks like they'll be able to kill it off. 15-23 left in regulation, all tied at three. Center ice faceoff. McDonald wins it for Watertown out of the box. Lopez back out in front. McDonald had it hop over his stick. He was all alone in on McClendon, but the hat tricks take the puck right back. Steve Mealy... Flings all the way down. That'll go for icing against the Hattricks, and that was not a great play from Steve Mealy to take the icing there right after the kill. No, yeah, I mean, I, I know what he was trying to do with Brother Tom there, uh, but but there was a defenseman between Tom and you know where the icing would be. It's not like Tom was behind the defenseman when Steve did that. So, not a, not a great decision there. Now a big face off to the left of Frankie McClendon. Hattricks can't win the draw. Steve Mealy lost it. McDonald down below the Hattricks net. Trying to shield the puck in the corner against Steve Mealy. McDonald does so at the bottom of the ring. Cutting to the slot. His backhand blocked by Daniluk. Into the far boards. McDonald at the point. Flings one in. And McClendon able to make the stop. The rebound in front. Jamea backhand just wide of the net. Has his own rebound in the corner. Drops it down below for McDonald. Past the five minute mark into this third period, tied at three. Watertown threatening in the offensive zone. McDonald swinging around behind the Hattricks net. Out to the left point, LaBelle fires off of McClendon and tipped wide. The Hattricks chop it to center and do get it out of the zone. McDonald for Watertown right back into the Hattricks end, but he'll go off for a change as he dumped it in. 14-20 to go in the third period. Hattricks. And Wolves side at three. Jackson almost over skates in front of his own net. Now having trouble getting out of the zone. Across to Stefanson on the far side. And it's a turnover for the Hattricks. The shot through traffic glove by McClendon as Hill freeze things down. 14.03 to go in the third. And the Hattricks and Wolves tied at three.
Fairfield County Bank is the official bank of your Danbury Hat Tricks. It's where the Hat Tricks bank and the tellers wear the Danbury Hat Tricks top hat. Fairfield County Bank is the hometown bank of the Danbury Hat Tricks and are proud to support their hometown team. We should also point out that Coca-Cola is the official beverage of your Danbury Hat Tricks. Our Coke will make you smile. Hat Tricks win the draw in their own zone. Jackson forward to Lopez, dropping it back. White Duck one timer wide of the net. And back out to the point, McDonald. Hattricks attacking to the right. McDonald shot off a body. High slot. Lopez digging away at it. Is able to work the puck free, but not passed. Watertown's defense and Slaketka will carry out to center. Deep into the Hattrick zone. Behind the net. 6.30 into play here in the third. Watertown controlling in the near corner. Hattrick zone. McKechnie. Turns by McDonald, and now McDonald catches back up, seals him off the boards. The puck works its way up the boards and out to center with White Duck chipping in. Hattrick's changing. Levesque, Ruiz, and Bunnell out for Danbury. This trio of Hattrick's veterans. Out on the ice looking for some offense. The stretch pass for Watertown into the Hattrick zone. Tifu in the far corner. 13 to play in the third. Tied at three. Ruiz upends Guillaume in the corner. And Di Costanzo comes away with the puck. Guillaume now behind the Hattrick's net. Swinging around to the near corner. He's sealed off by Ruiz. Guillaume has the puck right back. Hard angle shot off of Danilok. And Ruiz will carry to center. Three on two for Danbury, but... The end of a long shift, and the puck bounces off the end glass out toward the front of the net. Or the hat tricks. Well, retreat back to the neutral zone. Levesque out to Steve Mealy. And deep into the Watertown zone. In the corner, Levesque lays a big hit on King. Out to Steve Mealy, side of the net. Puck hops in the air. Now Tom Mealy tripped up in the corner, and that will be a penalty against Watertown. 12-11 left in regulation. Tied at three, the Hattricks will head to the Ferrer Electric power play here with a chance to take the lead. Well, you know, their power play came through at the end of the second period, giving them the 3-2 lead. Now they need another clutch power play performance here. And they're talking it over right in front of the bench. Talking a little strategy right now as King heads to the box, tripping Mealy at 7.49. And you know what? Just stem the Watertown momentum because it has been all Watertown here in the third period, out shooting Danbury six to one and territorially just absolutely dominating play in the period. So here's a chance to regain momentum and the lead. Patrick's win the draw, Lazaro, center point across the Danaluk near side. Right wing Tom Mealy, center point again, Lazaro across to Mealy at the point. 10 seconds into the power play, tied at three. Lazaro, left side this time to Steve Mealy at the hash marks, winding his way back to the top of the zone, circling high slot, fires just wide of the net. Kuznetsov comes out with it, far side, ring to ring, Tom Mealy near side. Back to the point, Lazaro. Far side in the corner, Steve Mealy back to Lazaro, center point to Tom Mealy at the near circle. Hattrix all the way along the perimeter. Now the shot through traffic wide of the net. Kuznetsov's feed back into the slot. Intercepted and cleared. 45 seconds into the power play for the Hattricks. 11.20 to go in the third period. Tied at three. Watertown. Winners of 13 straight. The Hattricks trying to end that streak tonight. Ruiz across to Benellin to the Watertown zone. All the way around the boards to the far corner. Levesque comes away with it in the corner. Dumps it behind the net. Nobody there for the hat tricks. The clear attempt kept in by Gallagher at the point. All the way across to Ruiz. Left point. Down low. Bottom of the far circle. Levesque upending himself. And back to Ruiz at the circle. Off the post with the shot. It bounces back to the center of the point. Gallagher to McDonald. Back into the slot. Ruiz on the one-timer. They score! The hat trick for Johnny Ruiz. Bunnell had the bumper pass out to the circle, and Ruiz finished it. Four, three hat tricks, and it's a hat trick for the captain. What a great, great setup that was. Johnny tapped his stick on the ice to get the attention of Bunnell. 
Look at that, that is just perfect. And Johnny Ruiz, who hit the post earlier on the shift on the power play, this time makes no mistake, and he has his first hat trick of the season and his team high 25th goal. Hat tricks right back on top. McDonald right into the Danbury zone. The backhand stopped by McClendon, shrugging it away with the left shoulder. It's played up the boards, not out of the zone. Watertown won't go away here in the final 10 minutes and 23 seconds. Jackson out of his own zone ahead to Lopez, skating after it. It can't get there. And it's McDonald right back into the hat trick zone. White Duck lifts his stick and takes over the puck. Jackson at center for the hat tricks, working his way in. Levesque and Bunnell get the assists as Ruiz gets the go-ahead goal for the Hattricks on the power play. All the way out, it's the shot from the point for Watertown taken by Daniluk in front of the net ahead to Kuznetsov. Skates by McDonald. Daniluk deep into the Watertown zone. In the near corner, player upended, no call against Watertown. Kuznetsov in the corner looking for the puck. It's played out to center. Stefanson at his own line, D to D French, and tipped into the zone by Steve Mealy. Behind the Watertown net with 9.20 to play. It's Harley White in in relief in this game. And the hat tricks unable to control here at center. Watertown takes right back over. Across at center, intercepted by Tom Mealy. Levesque into the offensive zone at the circle, looking for a wheeze in front. The tip wide of the net and taken out by Watertown. Guillaume into the hat trick zone. It's tipped away by the hat tricks and Levesque upended as he got out of the zone. Ruiz finds the puck in the neutral zone. It is Johnny Ruiz at the circle, fires just wide of the net, takes a carom off the end boards and into the circle where Sliketka carries out to center. Ahead to Tifu, swinging wide to the left and chipping into the hat trick zone. Eight and a half to play in the third. Johnny McDonald tips that one and it goes out of play. The hat tricks are claiming a deflection. The Wolves are claiming it went straight out. And we'll see what they say as we head to a break here with 8.24 to go in the third period. It's 4-3 hat tricks late in the third. Back inside Danbury Arena. Hattricks lead four to three with 8.24 left and a big power play goal for Johnny Ruiz. Absolutely, and you know power plays are brought to you by Ferrer Electric this season. Two power play goals for Johnny Ruiz and you need power, Pete is gonna light you up. You know that he's gonna do it. Dependable, reliable, and services that you can trust. Pete Ferrer and his team get you the juice to turn you loose. Light them up. Ferrer Electric, LLC.com. Johnny Ruiz is lit it up. First hat trick of the season. Boy, he came in a huge game and a huge moment there. Hat tricks in their own zone. The shot from LaBelle sticked away by McClendon. Danbury having to hold a lead late against Watertown. Haven't had this chance much against this team, but looking to give Watertown its fourth loss of the season. Ahead into the zone, Daniluk chips it high in the air, bouncing side of the net, and the Hattricks couldn't find the dump in. Watertown controls LaBelle up the left wing, near side to Chamelka. Ahead, looking for Day into the corner in the Hattrick zone. Sealed off by McDonald behind the net. His clear not out, King has it. Left point, LaBelle fires through traffic, and McClendon sees it. Makes the stop right in the chest. 
7.40 to play in the third. Hattrick's up one. McClendon has been very good tonight. Yeah, now has 33 saves in the game. And you know, we talked about how Danbury needed to play better defensively, and part of that is getting better goaltending. And, you know, in eight of their previous nine games, they've allowed at least five goals. They've allowed 54 goals in the nine games coming into play tonight. But, boy, this is Frankie McClendon's best game to this point in a Danbury hat trick uniform. He has been very, very sharp and really can't be faulted on any of the three goals. They were just good goals scored by Watertown. Can't blame him. He's played a solid, solid game. Patrick's can't win the draw again. The shot from LaBelle blocked by Gallagher. McDonald for Watertown has it right back. Fires through traffic again, sliding across McClendon. I don't know how he saw it, but he did, and he made the stop. Able to cover up, 7.28 to go. Patrick's up one, and McClendon doing a good job through traffic. Absolutely. You saw that one well through traffic. Gallagher trying to clear out the crease was partially causing a screen in front of his own goalie. But a good job by McClendon as this one is deflected up and over the glass and out of place. So no, no penalty here. And another faceoff to the left of Frankie McClendon. Hat tricks. Able to finally win a draw that time, but it tipped out of play. I have to do it again. Hat tricks want the draw to go to the neutral zone. It did go off the glass and out. Or maybe it went off a of Watertown sticking out. Yeah, I think that's Steve Mealy. I think that's his argument. And now, they now will. the faceoff will come outside the zone. And you don't see much argument from Watertown's captain, uh, Justin McDonald. He was in on the conversation, but no argument. I, I think he knew that it went off a of Watertown stick. Hat tricks win the draw this time, and Lazaro across to Gallagher, who will outlet to Steve Mealy across the Watertown line, dumps it into the near corner. Chasing after it, Kuznetsov can't win the puck. LaBelle is able to find it an outlet to McDonald for Watertown. Right to left across the hat tricks line, right side circle, Mafus. The shot stopped up high by McClendon. The rebound out in front, Tom Mealy finds it as Justin McDonald was prone on the ice, and Tom Mealy will skate to center. Across the red line, banks it off the boards to himself, but couldn't control it. Jameyev ahead to McDonald in the neutral zone. Stopped at the line by Lazaro. Tom Mealy now scooping forward toward the Watertown zone. At the Wolves line, it's played out to center. Kuznetsov hammers in deep to the Watertown end. Six and a half to play in the third period. Hattrick's up four to three. Lane King behind his own net here for Watertown. Looking to start a breakout. Soft chip ahead for McKechnie. His feed forward to Guillaume and deep into the hat trick zone. French chopping away at it. The puck hops high in the air. Levesque finds it and outlets to Gordy Bennell. Across the Watertown line, winds and rifles. It's in on goal and stopped by White, high out of his crease, with 6-10 to play and a one goal lead for the hat tricks. Well, this Watertown team has not only won 13 games in a row, but this year on the road, they are 10-2-0. There are only two losses on the road right here in this building at Danbury Arena. November 10th, a 4-3. Boy, that number or that score sounds familiar. 4-3 Danbury win. And on December 18th, a 4-1 win by the Danbury Hattricks. That was part of their nine-game win streak earlier this season. Ruiz wins the draw offensive zone. Levesque high slot down low to Ruiz. Hopped off his skate and into the... Dasher where he'll recover it in the corner looking to get the puck in deep. It was pushed out the center by Watertown and right back in by the Hattricks. Slaketka in the final six behind his own net. Watertown trailing by a goal. The Hattricks looking to end the Wolves 13 game winning streak. Tom Mealy intercepts at center but Tifu takes it right back ahead to Guillaume. Across the Hattricks line the shot swings wide and Levesque will tip it to Steve Mealy. Three on one for the hat tricks. Steve Mealy across the line, right circle in, and the shot stopped by the glove of White. Mealy had his brother Tom streaking down the left side. He had Kuznetsov to drop it to, but he elected to shoot, and it was the glove save from White. Yeah, Steve coming off that two goal, three uh, point outing against Binghamton, his last game that he played. You know, maybe feeling it there. It was a three-on-one. He had a couple options, several options. Took a good shot. It was just a really, really good snap glove save. 
Patrick win the draw. Comes out to center though, and Watertown right back in. 5.15 to go. Hattrick's up one, turned over at the Hattrick's line. Kuznetsov flies through center. All alone, one on three. The shot scores! <laughs> Dimitri Kuznetsov! Out of nowhere, all alone in the wolf zone. Extends the lead to two. It's 5-3 Hattrick's. 5-11 to play, and Kuznetsov extends the lead. What a wicked shot by Kuznetsov off the rush and from the circle, and he just whistled that one right past White. Let's take a look at this one again. I mean, that is a finish right there. We've talked a lot this season about his speed and how good Kuznetsov is shooting off the rush like that. And boy, that was, whew, that was a pretty one and a timely one by Kuznetsov. That's his 20th goal of the season. Hattricks deep into the Watertown zone. Final five minutes to play. We'll try to get you that replay at some point. It was a great shot from Kuznetsov. Watertown ices the puck. 4.45 left in the third. 5-3 Hattricks lead. We'll step aside here from Danbury. Hattricks up too late. We'll have the final 4.45 right after this. Back here at Danbury Arena, 5-3 hat-trick lead. And here's the latest goal. Look at this, Kuznetsov one against three, just snapping it on the rush and beating the goaltender to the far side. What a pretty, pretty goal. And we've talked a lot about him. When he gets the, the when he gets his feet moving like that, and you know, with that speed and that finish, he is a dangerous player out there. Tom Mealy. And uh, Lazaro with the assists. And a two goal lead for Danbury late in the third. Quick shot off the draw. Tips up high over the net. Hattricks on the four check here. Bunnell forces the turnover. Offensive zone. Looking for Ruiz. It was taken by Jameyev and out to center. Out to Mafus into the Hattrick zone. Down low, all alone in front. And McDonald couldn't connect with the pass. Levesque out to center, left to right. Carrying through and can't get the puck deep. First try, second try. Will backhand and shove it down the ice. Hat tricks. Slowing it down are the Wolves here with four minutes left in the third. Hat tricks up by two. Looking to end this Watertown 13 game winning streak. The long stretch pass ahead for Watertown at the Hat tricks line taken by Danbury. Well, Steve Mealy left to right in. And we'll just flutter in on goal where White covers up. 3.48 to go. Hattrick's up two. Just have to find a way to spend some time here late in the offensive zone. Josh, hockey is a funny game. It's a funny sport, right? Steve Mealy leads a three-on-one down ice, and they don't score. Then Kuznetsov goes one against three the other way, and he scores. Crazy stuff, but good stuff for the Danbury Hattricks, and boy did they respond after an early onslaught by Watertown early here in the third period. Kuznetsov shot all the way through into the corner, taking it out of the corner is Tom Mealy and lost control at the line. The final three and a half to play, chipped in right to left from Chamelka into the Hattrick zone. Sealed off the boards in behind the net, DiCostanto has it in the corner, looking to get to the point, but Tom Mealy crunches him and the Hattricks will carry out. Kuznetsov chips in deep, and White will leave it at the side of his own cage. Last three minutes in the third, banked ahead, and the Hattricks wanted icing, but Mafus beats that call. Now the, slot, the pass across, stopped by McClendon, maybe at the post, and the Hattricks 
survive that chance for Wees deep into the Watertown zone. Will just settle for getting that puck below the goal line. 2.45 to play in the third. 5-3, Hattrick's lead. Looking to take down, take down the top dogs in the league. Winners of 13 straight. The Wolves, Mafoos at the right circle. Hattrick zone, wrist one, stopped by McClendon. Two and a half to play. A lot of whistles coming here. Hattrick's up two. Yeah, Jameyev there uh, after the whistle laid the lumber to the lower back of uh, Brendan Gallagher. And then Nick Levesque copped in and wrapped his arms around Jameyev. It's a little frustration showing by Watertown, a team that does not lose often. And in fact, Josh, their most recent loss, well over a month ago, December 8th in this building, when the Hattricks defeated them 4-1. to Since then, 13-0. But that is in peril right now, that win streak. Hattricks left to right, Kuznetsov again, stopped at the circle this time. Looking to extend the Hattricks lead and get some insurance. He'll wing it down low, out in front, Tom Mealy to Steve, and he couldn't control the pass in the slot. Justin McDonald with 2.10 to play. Skating right to left through center, leaves it for Jameyev. White still in the net for now for Watertown. Deep into the hat trick zone. All the way around to the point, far side. King shot in, stopped by Steve Mealy, outletted to Levesque. Hattricks into the zone, Levesque across the Tom Mealy, stopped by Lane King, and it will be cleared out to center. Mafus into the hat-trick zone, 145 to play. Mafus cutting along the blue line, across the LaBelle, fires, stopped by McClendon. With the left-handed glove, he's able to keep it a two-goal lead for Danbury. When Steve Mealy got the puck uh, in his own end, he looked up like he was ready to shoot it down the ice, figuring that White was had been pulled from the net, but he hadn't been, so then he sent off Levesque and brother Tom on the on the two on two the other way. I'm a little surprised. A minute 40 to go here, down two, face off in the offensive zone. And like, White's not even out of the crease, much less out of the net and on the bench. And now a timeout being called by Brent Clark, the coach of the Watertown Wolves. So they'll talk it over. They'll call the timeout. Maybe now they pull White. I, I think you have to, right? And, and especially with you know, Watertown is so good on the power play. In essence, that's a power play. I mean, I, I think you got to take that chance. I, I, in fact, I, I wouldn't understand why you wouldn't take that chance. You're under two minutes here, and you, you need two goals. Even when you're that confident in your offense, you're still yeah. down two with 140 left. Yeah. If nothing else, get an extra body in front of McClendon. You know, McClendon's been very, very sharp tonight. And he was, he's been able to fight through screens and he's been positionally sound. But you know what? You know, get another body in front of him. Go six on five. You know, make it that much more difficult on him. I, I, I'd be very surprised if White is going to remain on the ice here after the timeout. And, Josh, I'm going to be very surprised because White is skating back to his net. I, I, yeah. I really do not get it. Now he's going to come off. Now I get it. That I understand. <laughs> they did send six skaters out. I think he just <laughs> maybe got confused a little bit. McDonald wins the draw in the hat-trick zone. Tifu at the point. The tip in front. Rebound. McClendon able to stop that one. And the second chance. Hattricks unhappy with Mafus in front. 134 to play. McClendon making not one but two stops there to keep the two-goal lead alive. And that's exactly what I said, Josh. Six on five, like a power play. You get the extra man in front of the net. They got the extra man there. Good deflection, and McClendon makes another terrific save. He's up to 39 on the night. Face off, push to the sideboards, and Watertown wins it back to the point. Tifu walking his way in, high slot, fires, high and wide, bounces out in front, and Levette comes away with it. His cross ice feed to Bennell does just trickle out to center, and it's swatted right back in. 1.15 to go with the empty net for Watertown. Hattrick's in their own zone. Lazaro high off the glass to center. Tom Mealy gets upended there, and Ruiz will try to fire from center. It was stopped by... Guillaume with one minute left. McDonald up the ice into the hat trick zone. Right wing stops at the circle. Cutting down low, dropping it to the point. Tifu across the king. 
King working his way. The tip wide of the net. Jemayev out to McDonald. Fans on the shot. And it's bouncing around in front. And they score. Jemayev able to find the rebound. The Hattricks couldn't find the puck. And Jemayev did. It's 5-4 Hattricks. 44.3 to go. And it's a one goal game. Not surprised. <laughs> Watertown finds a way with the goalie on the bench uh, to, to get at least one. And, you know, we'll see what happens the other 44 seconds here as now Dave McIsaac is going to use his timeout and settle his team down. But Watertown Jamaif is second of the game, 24th of the season, and it's a one-goal game. I got to tell you, this season series has been nuts. These games have been so good. And yeah, I, you know, I get it from a hat trick point of view. Uh, maybe you're not happy because Danbury was 2 3 and 2 uh, against Watertown coming into play, uh, you know, tonight on the season. But these games, this season series has been nuts. These games have been close, they've been intense. That's why I keep going back to the point I make when Danbury plays Watertown. These are the two best teams in the league in my book. Well, it's a neutral zone draw, one by Watertown. They'll try to get back tied with this one. White back to the bench. An extra attacker on for Watertown. 30 seconds left. Hattricks can't clear. King at the point. The shot blocked by Ruiz. Carried out to center. Levesque at the red line. Passes forward. Blocked by Tifu. He'll carry it back the other way. Players upended on both teams looking for a penalty. 20 seconds left. King all the way back in his own zone. Wings it all the way around. Tipped by Bunnell, so no icing. 12 seconds left behind the Hattricks net. Guillaume along the near half wall. Leaves it for Jemayev. All the way across. McDonald just high and wide with the shot. Five seconds left. And Ruiz will play it down the ice with two left and one. Levesque catches up to it. And the Hattricks win. 5-4. They end the 13 game winning streak for the Wolves and win it 5 to 4 with Frankie McClendon in goal carrying the way. Absolutely. What a great performance by McClendon. And, you know, for somebody that didn't watch or listen to the game tonight, you know, they may say, oh, Frankie McClendon, he allowed four goals. He was outstanding tonight. Clearly his best performance as a Danbury hat trick since signing uh, back in November. Boy, what a terrific outing by him. And the game, though, comes down to seconds left on the clock, and Justin McDonald, the leading scorer in the league, has the tie game on his stick. McClendon goes diving across the crease, but McClendon had the top of the net. It was there for the taking, and he shot it over the crossbar, and... The win comes to the Hattricks. The winning streak for Watertown is over. A big win for Danbury. And you know what? Danbury is now 12-2 and two this season in 14 games on home ice at Danbury Arena. A huge, huge win for the Hattricks, who were shorthanded coming in. No Dustin Gesso, no Aaron Atwell, no Steve Brown, no Tal Finberg. I mean, so many key contributors. Tobias Ojik was out of the lineup. And then Corey Anderson went down halfway through the first period. And yet they persevere. Huge game. Ruiz with the hat trick. Kuznetsov ends up with what turns out to be the game winning goal of beauty. And we talked about Frankie McClendon. What a performance. Boy, I, I could take a playoff series between these two teams, huh? Man, did they play great games. You could have a four to three game one night you could have an eight seven game the next night but, but the difference is probably going to be only a goal or two right it's going to be a tight race as this season approaches its halfway mark and it, Columbus also has been good this year Carolina may be streaking up toward the top and Binghamton is no easy fight a really good offense so this stretch run for all of these teams is going to be really interesting but the hat tricks if, if they get the goaltending that they need, they are right up there with any of these other teams. Yeah, and, you know, we saw it when they were on the nine-game win streak. You know, so much came together. They were playing a great all-around team game. They were scoring a ton. But really the heart and, the you know, the backbone 
of that winning streak was the play of Brian Wilson, if you remember. Well, Brian's up in the Southern Pro League now, and it's given Frankie McClendon an opportunity, and it's been an uneven run for him. But boy, oh boy, did he step to the forefront tonight. Uh, again, as you know, I said it a couple times, his best performance since signing with Dan Berry, and uh, he gets off the schneid against Watertown. He had been 0-5 this season against Watertown, but he gets the big win tonight, and the win streak is over for the Wolves. The hat tricks move to 17, 9 and 2, 49 points. Well, Watertown drops to 22, 4 and 0, oh, and three of those four losses coming in this building to the hat trick. Stanberry takes it 5 4 for my partner, Jim Cerny. I'm Josh Starr. Thanks for tuning in tonight. The hat tricks with a big win on home ice over the league's leading team, the Watertown Wolves. They take it 5 to 4 on. Frankie McClendon, strong performance, and a Johnny Ruiz hat trick. We'll be back with you next Friday night here as the hat tricks host the Carolina Thunderbirds for the first of a three-game series. The first 450 fans that night receive a free replica hat tricks puck courtesy of 1037 Alternative Rock from the Berkshire Broadcasting Studios over there in Danbury. And Thanks for so to get your tickets. To get your tickets. Got to go to danburyhattricks.com and find your way to get here next weekend for that series against Carolina. Sunday night, you can skate with the team after the game as well. Oh, oh, oh don't miss don't get misinformation. Sunday afternoon, isn't it? I thought it was an afternoon game. Believe it's a 7 o'clock start for well, that. Well, you know on what? Sunday night. Somebody is giving me misleading information. We'll Typically make that's you. Hey, sometimes I gotta <laughs> I gotta keep you on your toes, Jim. Yeah, someone has to. Thanks for joining us tonight. The Hattricks win five four.